Hello guys and welcome back to the Zane Investing. Want to discuss how every single share transacted on AMC is a fake share. Additionally, the average daily trading volume for the month of August was 11.85 million, which is marginally higher than the average daily FTD count of 11.5 million. So not only does AMC trade at a 1 to 1 ratio with FTDs on a daily basis, but also for the entire month of August. But allow me to pose a query. Can you identify another ticker that has a daily order imbalance, sell side or buy side? In the case of AMC, however, particularly on the buy side, you can see it here. Buy side order discrepancy of 163,656 shares on the New York Stock Exchange. Here are four more examples for demonstration, followed by four more examples for demonstration. Approximately 10 purchase side imbalances were just mentioned as an example. And why does this imply that they are counterfeit shares, that every single share transacted is counterfeit? In any case, we're going to begin immediately. The only thing I ask in return is that you click the like button, view the entire video, and enable post notifications. Why is there still volume when there are no sellers and the market is declining? Due to FIDS 1 to 1 ratio, AMC is matched day in and day out. And in one moment, we will discuss the manipulation. Now, it's a positive sign that AMC is receiving a large number of buy order imbalances. However, according to an SEC document detailing how manipulators end up prevailing against a stock, this could be fatal for us. Now, I'm not claiming that this will occur, but I do want to bring it to your attention. Will informed investors or active traders re enter the market? and purchase the underpriced shares if the speculator has driven the price close to zero to avoid the problem of disclosure? They will not unless they are confident in their ability to resist the manipulation's influence. However, if they propose to purchase shares, the manipulator can increase the naked short position to prevent a rise in the share price. This is precisely what you're observing right now. More investors are prepared to purchase shares. This explains why these purchase imbalances exist. Nonetheless, the manipulator can increase the short position to prevent a rise in the share price, which is precisely what we continue to observe. If he can maintain a price close to zero, prospective lenders and investors will likely conclude that the company's prospects have deteriorated and decline to lend or invest in its equity. In addition, customers may cease doing business with the company because its warranties will appear to be invalid. The company will eventually exhaust its liquidity and be forced to declare bankruptcy. If the company declares bankruptcy, the manipulator will no longer be obligated to cover its short position. This circumstance results in no cost to cover short positions. This form of manipulation may involve a single manipulator or a group of manipulators acting in concert to make an unusually high percentage of apparently unlucky equity investments that become worthless in bankruptcy, all of which have an unusually high trading volume, large and persistent fails to deliver, and a significant drop in share price below the stock's intrinsic value, frequently to pennies per share. And we observe extremely high trading volume in equities such as Mullen, where naked shorts are known to exist. AMC exhibits large persistent failures to deliver, and we also know that it has nude shorts. Essentially, if their objective is to force the company into insolvency, reduce its share price to pennies, have it delisted, or have it cancelled, then they succeed. AMC Bets, it is conceivable that they must be shut down on October 5, 2023, which is 35 days after September 11 of that year. The only reason I'm bringing this up is because we know we have a point of interest in early August, and I'm aware that a lot of people get upset when the timeline gets moved back, but it's based on the catalyst, the cycles, and the volume that we have. I cannot foresee additional delivery failures. This cannot be predicted. That cannot be predicted. However, the next potential setup is early October. However, I don't care about anything until AMC's stock price falls below $15.30. First, I need a break over that level, which is what we are currently monitoring, and it is up 3.7% on the day, which is a positive sign as it approaches the Ortex numbers of 11.54% short interest, 54% utilization, and the CASPI average of 4% to 5%. GameStop is still positioned within this wedge, up 1.54%, awaiting its breakout. 
Regardless of what the SPY does, I believe GameStop will react to the upside or downside breaching in or out of this wedge when the Fed speaks today. In any case, if the trend is adverse, I believe GameStop could maintain $16.40. So observe that level. Upon our breakout, I would like to surpass the relative highs near $19.50. Additionally, AMC winning the options chain for the first time in its history. It's a pleasant sight to see the former. Citadel Securities employees allege that the firm engaged in harassment and intimidation. Families are currently having their bank accounts frozen by U.S. institutions, and the CEO of NVIDIA has just sold another chunk of NVIDIA shares, making this his fourth sale in the past few days. He has now sold over $120 million worth of NVIDIA shares in the past few days. Apple is planning to establish its own stock trading platform, before moving on to the SPY and additional content. They planned to launch this last year, but they ended up delaying it as the stock market ended up plummeting. And to return to the Citadel matter, we are aware that there have been shady interviews, numerous bribes from Ken Griffin, and numerous covert meetings. Therefore, it is not remarkable that the organization engaged in harassment and intimidation. Yesterday, the DEC issued a crucial notice regarding Citadel's bonds. September's benefits are utterly insane. I realize I said that rather quickly. This link will remain at the very top of the description. Also, guys, the link to the Discord is directly below the video if you want to join. I am present on the daily. You can communicate with me and request videos. We discuss gains, losses, and equities all day long. And generally, only positive energies in Discord. It is literally 99 cents. Therefore, enter now. The interest rate response has not yet been received, but the S&P 500 index is essentially trading sideways. Still considering the hold at the 382 Phi B level for support on the SPI, which is near the levels 4284, 4285. Once more, a pause. These are the levels that I am examining. I anticipate the SPI to reach approximately 449 if we halt, and 460 if we reach 460, obviously not all in one day. I will only discuss the macro perspective. And then, if we raise rates to 431 basis points, I will be monitoring the SPI at these levels. Simply prepare for a response to be released today. The United States 10-year Treasury yield ends at 4.355%, the highest level since 2007, amidst a hoopla. Bank of America raises its S&P 500 year-end price forecast by 7% to 4,600, which is bullish. According to David Rosenberg, a recession will occur by spring, and the S&P 500 will fall by at least 25%. And this is consistent with Bank of America's price target price increase forecast for the S&P 500, as they predict a price increase by the end of the year, implying that it could scale up to that level. Then in the spring, they might concur with David Rosenberg and say, OK, it ran, and now it's going to crash. Overall, this is what I have for you folks in today's video. Hopefully, you enjoyed viewing or found value in the video. The like button is located on the exit page. Leave a comment beneath. I adore you all. The lottery has sold out.